क्या ए हमारे जॉब्स खा लेगा आने वाले समय में इन्वेस्टिंग पर इकोनॉमीज पर ए का क्या असर होगा दस सालों के बाद विद ए दुनिया कैसी दिखने वाली है ये बहुत सारे सवाल हैं जो हमें परेशान करते रहते हैं और इन्हीं सवालों के जवाब ढूंढने के लिए खोजने के लिए हमने बात करी मैक्रो इकोनॉमिस्ट ग्लोबल इन्वेस्टर और एजुकेटर राहुल पाल से हो सकता है आप में से कुछ लोग इन्हें ट्विटर पर भी फॉलो करते हो ही वॉज वन ऑफ द हैंडफुल ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स जिन्होंने 2008 की इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस को पहले से प्रेडिक्ट किया था तो आइए देखते हैं उस पूरे कन्वर्जेशन का एक छोटा सा ग्लिम्स जो होने वाला है इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज में ऑब्वियसली बट हमने हिंदी सब डाल दिए हैं तो आप टॉगल से उसे ऑन कर सकते हैं So welcome Raul uh, this is Rishabh and Nivedan uh, I run a channel called Labor Law Advisor in short we call it LLA which is the most viewed finance channel in India and uh, it has uh, recently crossed 1 billion views and uh, Nivedan so yeah uh, I'm Nivedan Rathi and uh, I run something called Future and AI and Rishabh and I are partners in this journey because both of us share this excitement and passion for what's coming next uh, i want to know you've made a bunch of predictions before whether that be in terms of predicting the mortgage crisis in 2008 uh, whether that be the price of bitcoin that will it'll shoot up to large numbers i think it you must have mentioned i think million dollars is where it would go to right and we've seen how dramatically it's gone up it's seen some cycles as well so i want to know given the multi dimensional interactions that we have of all these new technologies that are coming up what are the big predictions that you are making for the world in the next 10 or more years this is going to sound weird because my job is to live in the future and to see the future and figure out you know how it gets there i have a real problem i can't see pops 2030 i think we're about to hit an economic singularity not the singularity as we know but an economic one why you see GDP growth is driven by define economic uh, singularity a little bit. It's where the singularity is like the black hole is where the moment beyond which you can't forecast you, your understanding of what it is almost completely collapses. So it becomes unforecastable. Any tools that you have from the past and apply for the future, it's kind of all rules get rewritten. Fair enough. And what do I mean by that? It sounds very dramatic and I You know, I don't mind a bit of hubris, but this is quite a ridiculous thing to say. But really, GDP growth, so the the wealth of nations, is driven by three main factors. One, population growth. Why is India growing so fast? You have a young population, and so that drives growth. Young, uh, growing population. Two, productivity. India is having a productivity miracle because you're going from an agrarian economy to a digital economy and leaping it. overnight you know adha and um upi and all this stuff has been incredible okay great third part is debt you can sh- you can build debt um economic growth by debt growth china did that for example so where are we today debt growth stopped in 2008 most debt growth now servicing of old debts at government level most of the western world has aging populations or even shrinking populations Japan and China are both shrinking Europe is kind of teetering on the edge the US is still growing but you know if they close the borders to immigration they're going to have some real problems so we have and again India is in a very different world which is why it's in a secular uptrend in its own right because it has all of the right elements the west has all of the wrong elements right now but all of the money is in the west and productivity old people are productive you know check with your parents versus yourself you know you become more productive um because old people become less productive okay fine what's this got to do with ai well you are about to introduce infinite knowledge and infinite people so what is what is ai ai is to me the ability to scale knowledge infinitely and wisdom infinitely you know if we say knowledge now where we are today agi wisdom and we are very close to that i think open ai have agi already yeah. so we're about to scale what was the most human thing of all into infinite numbers and then robots scale humans in infinite numbers 
So when you put AI in robots, you have changed the population dynamic in a way we cannot simply understand. So if we go, if we look at Amazon right now, Amazon in the US or globally, I think, has about, I think it's about a million workers. Yeah. But there are 750,000 robots now. Those robots work seven days a week. 365 days a year they never complain they don't ask for a pay rise in fact they basically ask for a pay cut because all technology is deflationary okay this these things are staggering we also have the ability to solve cheaper energy and if we take if productivity is the is the units of output per unit of energy per kilojoule well if I look at the electricity price, I use the UK electricity price because it's the longest one I can find. It goes back to about 1950. It's basically stable, right? We've never, we've not really changed the cost of electricity over time. But EV, geothermal, I'm sorry, um, solar, geothermal, a whole bunch of these things are lowering the cost. It's just not scalable yet, right? We're seeing. I mean, India has the world's largest solar. Um, plan and um, that's uh, uh, that um, Ambani's built. But what we will see is obviously scalable nuclear as well. So if we l lower the cost of electricity from let's call it a price of a hundred, whatever that is, units, down to fifty, you've doubled productivity. Interesting. If you don't lower it down to twenty-five, you've tripled productivity. Okay, so you triple productivity and add infinite people. Plus, AI is more productive than humans. The speed at which this was happening, I was thinking this was going to be a 2035 event. But I, but I followed the space very closely. And I'm like, by 2030, we literally have no understanding what economies are. What is a company? If you look at, if you follow the AI companies, it reminds me so much of the token economy where, let's say, the ICO business where new business ideas start, they flourish, they get some idea, they disappear, others succeed, but it happens at a very quick rate. We're seeing this in AI, is people are coming up with amazing new ideas, OpenAI kills them in three months. If it's not OpenAI, it's it's anthropic. If it's not anthropic, it's, it's Google. If it's, you know, it's like, okay, we have a rate of Creation destruction, speed of which we have never seen before, except in crypto space. And I'm like, well, how does even VC investing work? How does investing work in this world? What does investing mean when you have an AGI? How do you, how do you make money? So it's not just the question of, oh, how are we going to get paid for our work? It's much bigger than that. It's like we're going to create a world that we can't fathom. There's a group, Nick Bostrom at Oxford, um, you know, wrote some famous books on this, but there's a whole team of people who look at this and they've got an economist who started looking at saying, well, listen, it's not that difficult to imagine that global GDP can start doubling in a year or even in a week. And I'm like, it's true. It's, and, you know, that's not the prediction, but the prediction is we have no idea. So 2030 to me, so I, I think about what does this mean for all of us? And the answer we have to say, honestly, is we don't know. But what I do know is we need to make as much money as we can between now and 2030. <laughs> that sounds reasonable. Because, because <laughs> if we don't know, we don't want to be disrupted by everything. Yeah. You want to give yourself some comfort because this is going to be a very complicated time to live through. You can either re embrace it or reject it, but it's still going to happen. So the best thing to do is secure yourself the best you can in the meantime. So make money now, otherwise who knows what will happen after 2030s. That's the general thing I got. I'm like, what is a business then? How, right. can, how can we, you know, I, I'm already building an, an AI using a video version of myself trained on all of my 20 years of stuff, plus all of the videos, plus my Twitter feed. So in three years time, I won't be showing up, you won't be showing up, it'll just be our AIs. What? What, what does that even mean? Right. So I don't want to sound like a pessimist, but when we hear opinion like this, 
uh, a question of course comes in our mind that say if agi will take over and it is it is happening sooner much much sooner than we we expect uh right now the primarily companies distribute their income in forms of employment salaries and which is one of the most significant expense in the balance sheet of most companies but with advent of ai and robotics uh if as you already mentioned that uh, uh the amazon has comparable robots versus human workforce and this will even speed up in coming future then what what will happen uh, to the employment market or job market won't it concentrate wealth with with a very very small group of people and uh, will some economies think about universal basic income ideas for everyone to sort of control that dissent or revolution you can say so firstly if the robots plus ai are human replacements then we should tax them like humans interesting right so if they're creating economic output then we should tax them so then the larger group of humanity benefits so if if gdp growth goes up massively because we've got these new super humans in the workforce fabulous we should all benefit so you know can that le- le- lead to universal basic income yes this was just a glimpse of our one hour long conversation with rahul pal in which we discussed multiple things about ai investing crypto economies and so on if you want to watch the entire podcast head out to future in ai youtube channel link of the same i am adding in the pinned comment